So guys, tune into the show. Don't miss it because it's going to be an amazing show. You are going to be touched. You're going to be amazed. You're going to be excited. It's Thursday, 11 o'clock on a Thursday. The Message Talk Show with Alex Gordon. Yes, don't miss it. So guys. Thursday, Thursday, normally I would say Thursday morning, but it is Thursday afternoon, one o'clock. We're tuning into the message talk show. As I normally say, get a cup of coffee, get a glass of water, call your friends, call your worst enemies. Yes, give them a call. Call your worst enemies. Tell them to come in and tune into the show because today is a very special broadcast. Yes, so special that we're not broadcasting at 11 o'clock. It's 1 o'clock because we got some special guests in the house traveling all the way. I won't tell you where they're coming from. They'll tell you that themselves. But get a glass of water, get a cup of tea, get something in your hand. Now turn off the radio, turn off the mobile phone, put it on mute. Shut down those those other pages on your page, your website, or your your internet. Shut them down because you've got to tune into the message talk show with Alex Gordon on uh, Thursday today. It's an awesome day. So today I have some very special guests in the house, and let me introduce you to them: Samuel and Sheila in the house. How are you doing, guys? We're doing good. Thank you. Good. good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, that's wonderful. Now, guys, I want to say today is one of those days. It's Thursday. It's almost the end of the week. And people are kind of low energy, you know, because they've been mm. working all week. No, they haven't been working. They've been sitting down at home doing jack. <laughs> they, 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 they act like they're working at home. But no, they're in their pajamas. Who can work in their pajamas? Tell me, man. Who can work in their pajamas? 
They're sitting at home, not doing any work. They've told the boss they're doing loads of work. But they're sitting in the pajamas. That doesn't stop them getting fatigued. So how are you guys today? We're doing good, thank you. How are you? Well, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited because it's Thursday. I'm excited because I do my show on Thursday and I do my thing on Thursday. That's why I'm excited. I'm also grateful that I woke up this morning. Amen. Yeah. I opened my eyes this morning and I looked around. And when I looked around, I knew I was here. Wow. I didn't open my eyes and think, am I in heaven? No, yeah, no, yeah. You've got many, many years. You've got many, many years to do yet. Yeah. A little bit more time yet. We've got loads of time yet. Hey man, we've got loads more to do. But I opened my eyes, and I'm still here, still breathing, and, I, and for that I give thanks. Everything Very else, nice. everything else can, can wait. That's right. The problems, the issues, the challenges that we face—they are—they are not insurmountable. But for That's just right. being here, we give thanks. Mm. I'm in agreement. Oh, yes. I am agreed. Definitely. Every single day you wake up, you just got to be thankful. Because many people don't. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, we've gone for a, a very difficult 12 to 18 months now. And a lot of people, we've lost a lot of loved ones. Yes. People have lost people we, we some of them haven't been able to bury them properly and yeah. so the, the grieving process that we'd normally go through is not happening or has not happened and so there is so much hurt in the economy right now yeah. there's so many people just hurting from the circumstance hurting from the challenges hurting but in the midst of it all we have to say to people, you know what, guys? This too shall pass. It's mm -hmm. going to pass, guys. It's yeah. going to pass. All yeah. you've got to do is hang in there. All you've got to do is hang in there because it's going to pass. Yeah, it's I mean, that's, that saying is absolutely brilliant. This too shall pass. I say that all the time as well. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It will go past. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's going to pass. It's a setback, but it's going to pass. So today we have uh, we have Samuel and Gilda in house talking to us today about the winning mind, the winning mindset, the winning mind. You know, if, if there is anything that we need to conjure in this time is a mindset that we can overcome and that we can win against all odds and against all circumstances. But before we jump into the main interview, I want to just to introduce yourselves and tell my audience who you are, guys. Okay, let me go first. Yes, so um, my name is Gilda. I'm the wife of this amazing man sitting next to me. Oh, amazing. Wow, amazing. Amazing, amazing. Okay, what can I say? <laughs> Um, what else is there to tell? I'm from a beautiful island in the Caribbean called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, We've got a small family here in Leeds. We've got three children, one grandbaby. Um, I have several different hats that I wear as day jobs and in the community and whatnot. Um, but yeah, so you tell me what you want to know and I'm happy to tell, ask away. Wow. Now you mentioned St. Vincent and recently I've been, I'm sure it was St. Vincent that the volcano erupted. Correct, yes. correct, correct. And it's I still saw some so photos of the ash. <laughs> As if it was yeah. snow. Yeah. How, how are they coping? How are they getting through this? I think, I mean, to be fair, um, we, we, we have a strap line, Vince is strong. Um, I think the people are very resilient. Um, and, you know, people are working through it. It's not an easy time for many people. Um, you know, we still have a lot of poverty. Um, and lots of people have been displaced. They're away from their, you know, from their homes. Some can't return to their homes right now because they're not in a fit state. They're still in the red zone where people are not really allowed to go back into just yet. So, um, but people are, you know, I think the um, people in the diaspora have really stepped up, stepped forward to send support back home as far um, as people can, you know, given their means. The rest of the world is in a pandemic. So we are in dire straits in other parts of the world as well. But I do think that, um, you know, we'll be okay. It'll take time. 
Um, but as you rightly said, this too shall pass. You know, I think it's a really good time for people to um to deepen their faith because you have to believe in something to get you through the difficult times. You know, so even if you don't believe in anything at all, you have to believe in something to believe in anything. Correct. Yes. Yes. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. Correct. Yes. Correct. But we're getting there. You know, we're getting there. It'll take time. It'll take time. And the hurricane yeah. season is hot yeah. on the heels as well. So, oh, all prayers welcome. <laughs> well, hurricane season. Oh, yeah. It yeah, starts on June 1st. So, wow. it's been a tough wow. few months. Wow. So, everything is happening at the same time. Correct. Mm. Correct. Yes. Correct. I mean, one thing I've noticed about the people outside of St. Vincent, though, you know, there's some people here. You know, St. Vincent itself is only tiny, and I think it's about five people in the UK from St. Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what I love is how we've all come together, they're raising money, they're sending barrels, and they're just really doing some really, really good stuff. Not just in the UK, but I've got some friends in America as well who are from St. Vincent. And they're all just coming together and doing some good stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah, again, it's awesome to see just people just reaching out and blessing others. So, yeah, brilliant. So, pe people, are, are, people, are, people are pushing through. Oh, yeah, yeah you, oh, yeah. we have, have to, do we? Well, I mean, there's no other choice, you know, I think. What's the option? Yeah, what, what is the other option? You know, to sit and wait is to, you know, is to just sort of just give up on yourself. So, people, I mean, like I said, the mindset is, this is what life has served you at this particular point. Mm -hmm. um, you have to get through it somehow. You know, so that's where people uh, are. Got to fight through. You've got to fight. You've got to push through. You that's know, right. But when I saw people taking sh um, shovels and, and shoveling the, the ash off the yeah. rooftops, yeah, yeah. That, that just threw me because I'm thinking... How do you come back from that? You know, the, the house is going to be wrecked. Yep, yep. And some, some people have lost their homes because the weight of that ash. I think when we say ash, people think it's like this really light, um, fluffy, harmless stuff. It's it's pretty much really finely ground up gravel that sits on your wow. on, on your roof. So for some people, their house, um, the houses have basically fallen in. Um, there's some areas where the government is still advising people do not to go back to. So even if you wanted to go back to clean up your space, it's still not safe to go there. A lot of the ash on the ground is still quite hot. Mm -hmm. So on the surface, it might be cool, but beneath there, it's still really, really hot. So I think um, my thing is I try not to, um, and this is just a personal view, not to um, to worry about the things that I cannot deal with or cannot do um so my i suppose my first port of call is um prayer you know uh, i'm a christian i believe that god answers and hears prayers my faith is deep and strong um and i do feel like um we you know faith about works is dead so we pray and we have faith but we also do the practical things that we can to support people so um you know that's that's the stance myself and my family have taken I know many other people have done the same. Um, but yeah, so it's just, and, and you know, and encouraging people sometimes, a word of encouragement goes such a long way, especially when you're looking at everything around you falling apart. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're working on, really. Challenges, challenges. Now, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. So Samuel, what about you, sir? Where, 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 who are you? Yes, um, yes. So my name is Sam Lee. I am an entrepreneur. So I've got, um, I run my own businesses. And it's not always been like that. I, I was a civil servant for many, many years. I was born in London, but I grew up in Nigeria. So I was in Nigeria for maybe 18 years. And but I've been here now longer than I've been in Nigeria. I've been in the UK since 93. Um, yeah, Gil has already described our family home. And yeah, that's me in summary. Uh, there's loads more where that came from, but I'll just stop it there now. Wow. So you guys, you guys have been on a journey over the years. You've, you've been on a journey, a, a journey oh, yeah. to, oh yes, <laughs> a, a journey to freedom, a journey to choice, a journey to 
your own path. It, it's a. It, it's sometimes. Sometimes when we look at life, we either we either accept life as it's been given, or we decide we make a decision to do something different. Mm, you guys made yeah. a decision to do something different. Why did you make a decision to do something different? Can I go first? Yeah, no, you go. Okay. Um, I think, you know, it's interesting. Um, mindset is one of the things that comes to comes to the forefront of my big head. <laughs> it's, um, it's one of the things that, um, depending on how you're socialized, depending on how you're raised, um, it often, you know, frames your expectations of your life. You know, um, and I, w I wouldn't say that I was in any way unambitious as a child, um, but you tend to see what's around you and you think, okay, this is what, this is all there is, you know, because that's what you see and that's what you know. In order for you to have a vision for something else, sometimes you have to step out of that comfort and that safety circle that you've grown up with or that you've known all of your life. You know, and you know, you said it very rightly. Sam and I have been on a journey. Where we are today is by no means where we were 10 years ago, even 20 years ago. You know, and we continue to grow and continue to stretch ourselves and continue to push the boundaries of where people probably expect us to be or even where we expect ourselves to be. Um, so for me, it really has been um, a shift in the mindset about um, what I can actually achieve um, to take um, myself out of my way because oftentimes we tend to think oh it's people but the the most important conversations we have are the ones we have with ourselves and the ones we have if, within our own mind so it's hey, for me uh, pause, pause there like that statement the most important say that one again say that statement again uh the most important conversations we have are the ones we have with ourselves you know, um, and I honestly, I do feel like we can talk ourselves out of things because, mm -hmm. you know, fear is real for a lot of people. Um, you know, and I'd lie if I'd say, you know, if at times I've not been fearful on our, um, our marriage journey or parenting journey or financial journey, all of it, you know, but hey, feel the fear, do it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so we just continue to push through and challenge ourselves to be the best that we can be in this life. But you see, feel the fear and do it anyway. It sounds great when you're watching the movie. It sounds great when you're watching the movie. But when you're in the movie yourself, man, I'm telling you, right? it's not the same. It's not. I think, I think for me, and that's a really good point you mentioned about do it anyway. And I think for me, that comes to the to my to the question for me about why the change. And I think we all fear the wrong things. Mm. What we need to fear is being 70 and still relying on the state. Wow. What, wow. what, what, I, what I fear is my children in 30 years' time looking after me, me relying on them to give me my pocket money. What wow. I fear wow. is not being able to, to work 40 years <laughs> and not have anything. Yeah. So, oh when you feel the fear, are you fearing the right things or the wrong things? So, mm -hmm. the reason I <clears throat> I had to make a change, or that we that, that was so personal for me, is being able to create generational wealth, is being able to leave my family in a better situation than I have, and that they can move on and do better for their family, yeah. so that five generations from now. They can go back and, you know, my, my son recently, he had to do his, um, his family tree. <laughs> and I think we got back to like four generations. Uh, my mom and her, uh, her parents and her parents. And that's as far as we go. But I want five generations from now for my, my future children and children and children and children to trace it back to Gilda and Sam Lee and seeing where things changed, yeah. whereby we leave them a million pounds so that they can do something with their lives. And they leave their children two, three million pounds and it wow. compounds. Wow. So for me, that is really why we, we decided to make those changes. We're making those sacrifices now so that our 
generations from now can look back and yeah. see something different. And just prosper, know. Yeah. you know, and, and just to add to that, if I may, you know, sometimes people hear these things and they think, oh, it's about the money. It's not about the money, you know, mm. it, because the thing about it, money is good. Um, but if it's in the wrong hands, it doesn't make a person better. You know, um, I think as, um, as people of faith, there are lots of things that we would like to accomplish in our lives and to help other people accomplish in theirs. Um, and it's really difficult to step up and look out when, when you're struggling in everything, you know, um, finances is one of the things that people hate talking about. If you want to kill a conversation, ask people about their money. Like, hmm? <laughs> Radio silence. <laughs> hey, you, know? you want to kill a conversation? <laughs> Honestly, it's just like what, what? What did you say, huh? It's like people people are not comfortable with it. Um, but we need to start talking about these things in order for us to be able to to move forward and to enable us to be a blessing to other people. You know, so often yeah. we want to do things. Um, but we can't because we're just we're stuck in just being able to just scrape, just keep our heads above water. And some of us are not even doing that. Some of us are straight drowning. <laughs> you stuck know, in stuck. stuck in yeah. stuff. So it's, 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 it's not about just cash. It's about, like I said, for me, it's the mindset change and just, you know, just pushing boundaries a lot. So before I ask you about the shifting mindset, mindset. And that real and big shift that you made. Let, let me just talk to the audience here and, and say, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know where you're listening from, but you're listening to the Message Talk, talk show, show with Samuel and Gilda talking about the winning mindset. And today, you have got to change or make a decision to have a different mindset. You have to make a decision if you want the future to be different. If you want the future to be anywhere different from where it is right now, it requires a decision on your point. So let's go back to, uh, as it's been stated, the power couple here. I have a note here that says, this is the power couple. Wow. <laughs> so let me go back to the power couple and ask the question, saying, how did the shift in mindset take place? Okay, shall I go? Yeah, go for it. So I think um, for now, okay, I, and I've said this before and I'll share it again. I think growing up, yes, it's a case of you you go to school, yes, um, because a good education should be the thing that propels you into stardom, <laughs> you know? You go to school, you learn well, you do all the things, you take all the boxes, you come out, you get a great job, and boom, you live happily ever after. That didn't really work out like that for me. You know, um, and I did, you know, I did go to school um, and God bless my, you know, my parents and my, my older siblings who, you know, did their best to provide for me a good education. Um, and then we just found ourselves and then, you know, we got married. And then at, at one point, I mean, one of the things that we decided, I'm sorry, it's a long winded story. I'll get to the point, I promise. <laughs> um, um, you know, I wanted to stay at home with my children when they were young. I just felt like, you know what, that was the thing. I wanted to be the one to see them take the first steps and do all of those things. But that came at the sacrifice of me not being able to work or not being out at a job, you know. Um, so then Sam took on another job. And even with that, like, we, you know, there were days, I tell people this, I literally went through the supermarket with 20 pounds, yeah, 20 quid. And if I dared go past that by one penny, problems. So I became a mathematician in that supermarket. And like, okay, what needs to be done with this, that, 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 that. And we decided, actually, what, what are we going to, is this how we're going to actually be forever? But we didn't really have the tools at that point to understand how to be any different. You know, um, thanks be to God. And I say this, you know, um, you know, a gentleman came into our life, and I'm sure Sam will share a little bit more about that, who showed us a different way. But, you know, just keep it in mind, stick a pin in what I said about before, that we knew something had to change. Yeah. But even when that change came, 
and basically sat in our front room. I was like, um, who is this guy? Why is he here? Why is he asking us all these personal questions? You know, because like, excuse me, none of your business, sir. You are a stranger. <laughs> Um, so that's where the shift in the mindset had to come where, you know, we have to get uncomfortable at times for us to feel the need to actually move, to shift. Okay. Um, that information came, um, via Jenny Star, Um, and it was, you know, initially I did not understand it and that's the truth. Um, but with time more and more, as Sam took the time to explain things to me better as John Rassiso, you know, showed us a different way of dealing with our finances and, and debt, you know, and learning that debt is one of those things that really just strangles the life out to you. You know, some of us want to be cute. We're paying the uh, minimum payment on our credit card and feeling, you know, feeling like, yeah, we're doing something. No, <laughs> get rid of it okay. as quickly as possible. But yeah, so, but that's me. I'll be quite honest with Sam can I mean, share. Well, you know, just shared something now, but I've kind of got a confession to make. Wow. And the confession really is that before Gilda married me, she did not have a single debt. No, so she, she moved from St. Vincent, she studied in Cuba, she came to the UK to study three different countries, finished university, no debt. And then she married me. <laughs> and then, you know. The day she married you, things changed. <laughs> I, I unfortunately was really bad with money and I had a lot of debt. And when you get married and you're together, it's not yours, it's not mine, it's it ours. One, yeah. um, and so a lot of the debts, well, all the debts we had really was mine to, was ours. I shouldn't say mine anymore, but yeah, I brought it It became up. ours. It, it became, became ours. When you marry, you become one. There's no yours and mine. His and, and ours. It's yeah, one. so we, we had to, you know, it had to be sorted. It had to be dealt with. You know, like I said, like Gabriel said, going to the shop, getting to the till, putting things back, that was not acceptable. Especially when you now have children looking at you. They're watching you. And guess what? Yeah. They don't, they don't do what you tell them to do. They basically do what they see. And for me, that was, that was, you know, that was tough. Be seeing my children not being able to have things. And we had, like I said, I've always wanted to have something for them to have. It's always been a mission for me, but just never knew how. And, you know, yeah, having yeah. a great job. I had a great job. Yeah. Um, but it was just giving me enough to keep my head above water. It was never giving me enough to, actually become debt free mm -hmm. so we needed to make a decision and do something different and um, but that had to come somewhere um wow. but yeah i don't know if that answers but, your question but, but talking about making 20 pounds <laughs> last <laughs> making 20 pounds feel like 100 pounds <laughs> <I'm a magician. laughs> that takes a certain kind of dedication <laughs> Hey, because she did she economics. Did. She did economics. <laughs> she did economics at uni. So, you know. <laughs> so, so now look at this, Samuel. So, in the times when there was lack and you had to do more than one thing to survive, what were you thinking at that time? Did you ever think, did you ever think things were going to change? In my mind, I always did. And I think that was because, I mean, dude, I've tried everything. Um, uh -huh. I used to be a DJ. I, I used to be a driving instructor. I've done all sorts just to see if there was anything extra we could do. Um, but I always, I always strove for more. I never actually sat down and just did nothing. I was always trying to do something else to make a difference. So I think in my mind's eye, I always hoped that something would, like when you wow. hit the jackpot, wow. I always hoped that something, you know, I would strike gold somewhere. And yeah, the gold finally arrived. But it took, wow. it took wow. time, it took dedication, it took just being able to communicate yeah. and, you know, get an understanding this is what... <laughs> I remember when we first got married, when we had our son and we moved into this um, apartment, 
Gilda, we decided that we didn't want anybody raising our children. And so Gilda decided to leave her job because I was earning more. She was the one who was having the baby. And so I took on another job answering telephones. And I used to work my job from 9 to 5. I would leg it to this place. No, 9 to 4.30. Yeah. And I would run to this call center yeah. for 5 o'clock. Used to work there till 10 o'clock. And then I'd come back home and the house was empty. Yeah. So for the first empty. <laughs> so I had to run back home and do the painting, wow. do the carpeting, because we didn't have any money. So I did all the painting <laughs> in the house. And... Uh, might I just add here? Yeah. Sam does not do DIY. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Sam, I do not do DIY. God bless him. Where I come from, we don't do DIY. I'm from Nigeria. We pay somebody to do it. So. <laughs> <laughs> it does not end well. <laughs> but you know what? It's, it's you had to do it. Yeah. Yeah. It had to be done. Yeah, and, you know, and, 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 I, and I respect his hustle because he he, he was trying to do what he needed to do for his family. But I'll just put something else in there. I think one of the things that we, um, and I'm going to use the word suffered from initially, was we were working hard, but we weren't working smart. Because like right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. Sam is, you know, he's working smart. He's working hard, but he's also working smart. So he's got different businesses going now. And when you look at it back then, he was working, you know, two jobs, um, you know, three jobs, whatever is happening, you know, because there's always something. If somebody said they need a DJ, you know, you, he'll be there, you know. Um, but I think it's about understanding that just working hard doesn't really, enough, enough. it's not enough. It's about being wise about understanding what, what debt you have, how it's crippling, you know, importantly, what, it, what that's teaching to the generations behind you. Um, it's also important to understand how to get rid of that debt, you know, because um, right now I can safely say we are debt free. The wow. debt that we have is debt that um, is, is strategic because you know what it's like. You have to have your, what's it called? Like, the, 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 your credit, help me. That nonsense. Yeah, that blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? So there are certain things that we will do because we need to have a good credit rating. And I've I worked out from an early point that in England, if you want to have a good credit rating, you have to not pay in cash always. Yeah, yes, I go. Yes. If you want something, you save up, you buy it, you don't have it, you wait. That's it. You go about it. That was the principles that my mother instilled in me, which is why when we met, I had no debt. I'm like, if I don't have the money to buy it, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, but it's, it's about learning um what is sensible you know like i said of yes, the debt yes. one of the, when we understood what we needed to understand um one of the first things we tackled was to get rid of that debt you know the stupid store cards the argus cards the the um the, the credit cards that just throw money at you and it's so yes, easy yes. to buy easy easy, easy so to get easy just think oh I'll just pay on the credit card and next month i'll pay off how are you going to pay off when every single month, as soon as you're paid, you're in your overdraft? There is no extra to pay off with. Wow. You know? so, let, me just read, let me just read this statement coming from Sharon. Yes. Sharon said, my husband paid off my credit cards when we got married as my gift. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that a lovely husband? Go on, brother. <laughs> but I didn't have the education to spot using them. So this is a great talk. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. And one more. Marriage requires financial literacy. That it so is does. true. It so does. It, it so it does. It requires financial literacy. So in, as part of your education, as part of the financial lit literacy and understanding that you have developed the shift in mindset, what kind of books do you read? <laughs> <laughs> no. Sam, Sam is the one who probably does most of the reading here. Now, I am... Um, I used to read loads, and I, that, this, is, this is my good confession, isn't it? Um, <laughs> I, used read, I used to read loads. I used to be an insatiable reader, and then life happened, and everything just got busy. So I do read. So right now, I'm very slowly, and I say slowly, reading through um, True Riches. Um, I okay. think it's a, it's, a, it's a book by, um, by Jeff. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and it's a really good, because um, I wanted to have a deeper understanding around things like tithing and that type of stuff. And that's, that's the real reason I picked the book up. But there's so much more to it than that. But that's a whole different conversation for a different time. <laughs> um, and the Bible. I read my Bible religiously. I say religiously because um, the thing I love about the Bible, and this is probably going to sound so cliche, but for me it's true. Like it never gets boring and it's never old. Like I, th there is no topic that you can possibly ever want to find out about that is not grounded there. And I think most of the self-help books, most of the motivational books, that's their foundation, really. I think that's the that's the most plagiarized book in history. <laughs> does not always get does not always get its, its credit. Um, but that's the foundation for me, really, to keep me grounded and keep me. Keep me steady. It's a best but I do the Bible is a bestseller. So it's a it's best bestseller. Yeah. Hands yeah. down. Hands yeah. down. I do piggyback on some of Sam's um, um, audio books, though, because yeah. he does have quite a few. So, Yeah, I think for myself, I used to read a lot growing up. I used to be one of those kids in class whereby the teacher would be teaching <laughs> and I would have my face down reading pace setters. These were African African libraries. You know, pace setter, James Hardy <laughs> I used to read a lot of um, famous, five. Yeah, famous Five, all those kind of things. And then for a while I stopped, and then I read a book in 2009 called Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And that book completely blew my mind. I was like, where has this been all my life? I'd never read anything like that before, ever. Great stuff. And it's amazing how 2009 I read that book, 2010, the opportunity came, because I'm like, where do I find this? How do I make this work for me? And then this opportunity came that's really helped us to be where we are right now. But since then, I read a lot of motivational books. I read, you know, my current, the book I'm reading, I'm reading two books currently. One is um, The Millionaire Mindset, The Secrets of the Millionaire Mindset, and the other one is The Wealth Choice. Um, and I'm reading, oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, and again, because I'm a leader, I'm, already, I'm also reading... Um, the Bible from leadership point of view, um, pastor to me actually, um, Maxwell. I'm currently so reading it. this. Um, it's uh, it's it's a leadership, and Maxwell is gone okay. through the Bible. He's gone through the Bible, picking out leadership roles from different places in the scriptures. Absolutely awesome book. Um, so yeah, I'm reading three books: two audio and one physical book. Um, but yeah, I do I do enjoy. A good book. The Alchemist is a good one. I just finished as well. Wow, man! You are certainly you are certainly on a journey. Just reading alone, man. <laughs> That's the audio books. <laughs> that, is, yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, so, I think are, are really good in the sense that um, sometimes you don't necessarily have the physical time to sit and read. Mm. You know, and I'm sure that time will come. We're just in the phase of our life where. We've got, you know, lots going on with parenting and whatever else and life and or different roles. So it's nice to, for example, I spend a lot of time um, in the kitchen cooking, you know, doing stuff like that. Um, I'm just generally doing chores. I'm not very good at sitting still for too long. So, <laughs> so I, it's nice when I can have something uh, listened on the move, but you're still feeding the mind, you know. There's so many different so, ways for us to so, consume knowledge. Wait, wait, wait. So, so, we are, we are lucky to have you here sitting right now for the interview then, for, for the next for the last 30 minutes. Trust We're very fortunate. <laughs> um, it's also good when, when I'm dropping the boys, I'm always in the car with our children, listening yeah. to stuff yeah. like that. I'm listening, but they're also listening. You know, They might not think about it, but they're listening to it. And that's another reason why when I get in my car, that's usually the first thing I put on, an audio book. So they, they, they're getting it, they, they're getting it, assimilating it gradually. Yeah. Um, they listen yeah. at the same time. Yeah, that's I think right. it's also good wow. to have conversations yeah. with them. You know, oftentimes we teach our children, there, there are two things I always say to people. We often teach our children everything else, how to comb their hair, how to wash their face, how to tie their shoelaces, how not to chew with their mouth open, how not to, you know, burp and, you know, how to sneeze or whatever. But we don't manners. Teach them manners, you know, basic manners. But we don't teach them about finances and we don't teach them about relationships. And I, I know that's a very broad sweeping statement. I know many people probably do that. But um, very often I find... We just don't have discussions about children about 
money mm-hmm. and about relationships. Mm-hmm. And these two things really are some of the things that are going to either make them or break them in their yeah. in their lives. Yeah. You know, so I feel like we we do have conversations with us and I would encourage people to do the same thing with their children. You know, get get them comfortable with talking about these things now mm-hmm. so that, you know, 10, 15 years down the line, you're not having to build them out of loads of debt because they don't understand what a credit card does. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. They don't wow. understand how to invest their money. Or uh, they get everything they get, they spend, and they spend not only what they have, but what they don't have. But it's, in, it's wisdom, isn't it? It doesn't just fall out of a tree and hit you on the head. You have to learn these things. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talk, We're on the message talk show talking to Samuel and Gilda. And we're talking about the winning mindset. We're talking about the shit. We're talking about the books that people are reading. We're talking about what we should be teaching the kids at an early age. About money, about relationships. Guys, there is so much that we've got to do in our lives in order to become successful, in order to have the winning mindset and the winning frame of thought every day to get up and do what you gotta do. It is just an amazing task when you when you when you're on your journey and no one has given you the tools. <laughs> Can you imagine that? There are thousands of people around who are on a journey and they haven't got the necessary tools for the journey. That's right. Very true. Very true. We're fortunate to have the tools. Before we pose the last question, I will ask the last question. Let's just go to our sponsor. You are listening to the Message Talk Show and Podcast. Do you believe you have something to share? Do you believe you have something to contribute? Do you have a story? to tell the world to share with your community Gandhi said man often becomes what he believes himself to be if you think you can you can if you think you can't you can't so join us on the message talk show and podcast with host Alex Gordon now when we started the conversation both of you talked about this. and if I could put a word talked about legacy you talk about leaving you talk about helping far beyond your time on earth but you're talking about three and four generations away from us oh yeah why is it so important to talk about legacy right now um for me really it is about it's about equipping them to be the best that they can be um, I think um, for me, yeah, like I said, money is great, but even without physical cash or assets, um, because Sam and I probably won't achieve um, all of the things that we envisage for ourselves. It would be great if we could, um, but I completely, I should say, we completely intend to plant the seeds in our children's minds that wherever we have left off, they will pick up. Now, without any disrespect to, to our parents, when the time comes, when they pass on, you know, by the grace of God, um, what they're probably going to leave us is debt. And I say debt because we're going to have to figure out a way to, to bury them. We're going to have to, um, you know, and, and fair enough, that is what it is. You know, they, they, they've brought us thus far, and then we have to continue from where they've left off. But I think really important for us is to, is to change one, the mindset around um, prosperity. You know, I think a lot of us see, um, you know, based on misunderstandings and misconceptions of wealth, mm. um, see it as something that is evil or mm. um, something that derails people. My understanding is that um, you give honor to who gives wealth, the wealth giver. You know, because it's not because I'm extra special that I have this thing, no. Um, this is a blessing from God and to teach our children how to be empowered by that so that they can carry that on and give them options to do things and enjoy their life. You know, one of my favorite books of the Bible is Ecclesiastes. Some people find it quite morbid and depressing. I happen to love it because I think Solomon just breaks it down and keeps it very real. You know, enjoy your life, serve God. Simple. <laughs> it's not don't complicate it. I'm for you everything. Know? Yeah. There's a time for everything, you know? Many less, many less than the teacher. Sam laughs at me. He's like, Ecclesiastes, really? I'm like, yeah, yeah. Um, 
But I think going back to the point of legacy, it's just giving them the opportunity and to build and without um, bringing any, um, don't want to say shade, no, no pun intended. I also understand that we are raising um, black children in a society where people are very quick to put them into boxes of where they feel like they should be. Um, mm. I keep saying to my kids, um, don't allow anybody to build a shape and put you in it. You create your own space. You create your own, you know, you create your own opportunity sometimes because in many cases we have to do these things. Mm -hmm. uh, lots has changed in the world, but unfortunately lots of things also remain the same. So it's about giving them the platform and the springboard where they can actually move and grow and prosper and have a, you know, have a good life where um, they will have challenges. You know, we will all do those things to make us grow, but to also be able to pass that on to the next generation. So each generation becomes better than the one behind. That For me, that's what I want to pass on. Wow. Yeah, I think for myself, it's just, it's good to have. Mm. Simple. If you have, you can give. Yeah. If you're blessed, you can bless others. So I want to bless more people. I want my children to be a blessing to other people. And I want to pass it on. You know, look at things like the Prince's Trust, mm -hmm. where it's been set up for years and years and years. Yeah. You might not like, yeah. yeah. like it. <laughs> However, it's investing in people. It's giving people on a yearly basis. Yeah. Why not me? Why can't we start the Lee's Trust and just bless people from all, all over the place who might not have be able to give them more? Mm -hmm. So for wow. me, it's about yeah. giving more, just blessing people. So I want to I want to be blessing to my children and their children and their children so that they can pass it on. Yeah, that's so important because I, I was speaking to a client yesterday, and this client was talking about wanting to set up a foundation mm. and allowing this foundation to touch, enable young people's lives, go back into our community where she came from, to give yeah. awards, to give encouragement, to give scholarships. Yep. Just, just to enable yep. another generation to step up, just to That's step right. up on a, on, a, on a level playing field. And I, I was so moved by that, that, she, you know, she was building this into her program, that this must happen. It's not going to happen by accident. It's a no. deliberate, yeah. intentional plan that she's put in place to make it happen. Yeah. You have to really We've always done stuff in the community in Leeds, you know, we've, We've been part of after school clubs. Gator was the governor. I, I'm, a, I'm a school football coach. I'm a, a, I'm a group scout leader. We do all sorts of things. Gator is a chair of one of another school after school. It's just investing. The more you invest in people, the more you get. Just it's yep. just natural. The more you give, the, the more you will get. Help enough people get what they want. You get what you want just naturally. Um, wow. It's, it's wow. just blessing, just blessing people. So if there was one, if it was one sentence, now, most times when I, when I speak to my guests and I say, give one sentence that you're going to wrap this up in, it ends up into a paragraph or a whole chapter, or it goes on for another 15, 20 minutes, all right? On this occasion, if there was a, if there was a sentence, a paragraph that you wanted to share with the rest of the world listening right now, Seven million people listening to you right now. What would that be? Hmm. I'll have to think about that for a second. Maybe something good. <laughs> so I mean, again, I just said it earlier. For me, it's always been about just helping people. If I think about me being here, the guy that helped me to be here is dead and gone now, but his, le his legacy lives on. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's help enough people get what they want. You will get what you want. So that, that would be my close. Back to your close. Okay. Uh, for me, it would be um, leave any space you enter better than you found it. Oh, my, 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 my. Leave any space you enter better than you found it. Now, you know I'm going to use these quotes, right? I'm, I'm making a note of all of these quotes right here. I will give you the, the first time I use it, I will give you credit for the quotes. But by the third time I use it, I'll drop the name off. <laughs> and you know what? She does that. We have an event anywhere. She's like, we've got to clean it. We've got to leave it better than when we found it. It's about the energy. 
Yes. Yes. You have to work with good energy. You know what I mean? And it, it might not be financial. It might just be your time. But your presence in a place, a space, an activity, a moment, strive to leave it better than you found it. You know, wow. In, wow. It basically just be a blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the Message Talk Show with Samuel and Gilda talking about the winning mindset, talking about the shift, talking about the changes that they've made in their own life to be the better version of themselves, talking about the legacy, the development for the children, developing their mindsets as well to be different, and also leaving the space better than you found it. I'm hoping today that I leave the space better than I found it with this interview and the energy that's been going out from this interview thank you so much for tuning in today guys samuel and gilda i thank you so much for tuning in for being thank the guests on the show so today. Thank, thank, you. Thank, thank you thank you so thank much you it's been an honor thank you your great inspiration great inspiration and you know sharing from where you came from to where you are and to where you want to get to that's encouragement to a generation people out there who are, are finding life a challenge they're finding finding they get, get stuck where they are and they can't move mm. and because they can't move so many people have done ill things they've they've taken their lives they've, they've hurt themselves they've damaged yeah. themselves but you're saying today no matter where you started you can make it that's right doesn't matter where you're coming from it's where you're going that counts it's where you're going that matters guys yeah. Tune into the Message Talk Show again with host Alex Gordon. And just want to thank this couple for tuning in because we'll be back on the Message Talk. So guys, tune into the show. Don't miss it because it's going to be an amazing show. You are going to be touched. You're going to be amazed. You're going to be excited. It's Thursday, 11 o'clock on a Thursday. The Message Talk Show with Alex Gordon. Yes, don't miss it. So guys, tune into the show. Don't miss it because it's going to be an amazing show. You are going to be touched. You're going to be amazed. You're going to be excited. It's Thursday, 11 o'clock on a Thursday. The Message Talk Show with Alex Gordon. Yes, don't miss it. show you gotta be on the show yeah yeah